Hello everyone. We are going to look at lecture A28, uh, which covers the U-test statistic for two samples that are not paired. So we're still with the non-parametric uh, tests, um, and this is the third one that we will look at, and this is basically looking at the two samples that are not paired. This is a very short lecture, um, and it looks mainly at the Mann-Whitney U-test. It's also a Wilcoxon test, but it's um, the Mann-Whitney U-test. So we'll we'll remember that as the as, as the U-test, and there's a short exercise that you can do by yourselves. So the Mann-Whitney U-test. Um, or with samples that um, they come from two populations that are independent. So the number of observations for each group does not have to be the same. So that's that's important to remember that the two populations are independent and, and they are not paired, whereas in the previous lecture those observations were paired. And then we have the same general procedure of the hypothesis. We state the hypothesis. So now it's because it's two populations, uh, or two samples, we're saying under H0, the median of a group A is equal to the median of group B, and under the alternative, that these two are not equal. And we have the, the level of significance, then alpha. Our rejection criterion, because it's a two-sided test, is going to be reject H0 if the absolute value of the test statistic is greater than Z alpha over 2, because it's a two-sided test, which is also, you, you can also look that up on the t-tables with degrees of freedom infinity, but with alpha over 2. Now the test statistic is again grouped into four parts. Um, it's a nice way to remember when you're doing the exam or you're doing uh, some of the exercises that you need to do four parts for the test statistic. So the first part will be to label the data from the two populations as 1 and 2. Okay, and we mix the two data sets. So we rank these data sets, um, noting the data from 1 and noting the data from 2. And you'll see how we rank those, the, the, data, the two data sets. Then we count the total number u, we, we label this as u, and this is the number of observations from population 2 that follow observations from 1 in the ranking. In other words, we fix population 1, so we have these ordered um, data set and it's mixed up between population and population 2. Then we fix population 1 and count observations from population 2 that are greater than the fi value fixed from population 1. So for each value in population 1, we'll count how many observations were greater than that value that were from population 2. So for each value in population 1. Then we obtain N1, N1 is just the number of observations from, from 1, and N2 is the number of obs observations from population 2. This is not different from that N plus and N negative. This is now the number of observations, and remember these won't be the same because they are independent samples. Then we obtain the distribution of U, and U will be normally distributed with N1, N2 over 2 as my mean, and that one there over as my variance, which is sigma squared. Then we calculate the test statistic, and we say that the test statistic, which is the z, is equal to x minus mu over sigma, um, where z is now becomes normally d distributed with a zero uh, mean and a variance of one. And we note u can also be replaced with x. So this x here is actually that u that we calculated over there, that counting the total number, and you'll see it from the example. So that's where that, that x comes from. So in, you could also have u minus mu divided by sigma to calculate your test statistic. Then our step four is our decision. Uh, we know the rule of thumb. If my the absolute value of that test statistic is greater than the critical value, I'm going to reject H0. My conclusion is based on the decision that I made. So either you're going to reject, when you reject H0, you're going to say sufficient evidence at the specified level of significance to reject H0 and make your conclusion. Or if it's failed to reject, we say um, so insufficient evidence at the specified level of, level of significance alpha uh, to fail to reject H0 and make our conclusion based on that. Now we look at an example 
um, that's in your notes and we're going to do together and the example is as follows the weights of leaves produced by plants from the same original source after experiment comparing two artificial day lengths one and two so there we have a sample one and the sample two so from this test from this data you can see that this data is independent and they don't have the same sample size. So N1 will be a certain number and N2 is, will be a certain number and they are not the same. Test the hypothesis of equal medians at the 2% level of significance. We're going to look at that question together. So this is the example in your notes. And the first step is to state the hypothesis. So we have the hypothesis. And under the null hypothesis, you're going to have H0, the median of population 1 is equal to the median of population 2 versus the alternative that the median of population 1 is not equal to the median of population 2. So alpha is the 2%. 2% and this is a two-sided test so alpha over 2 which is going to be 1% then the second step is to state the rejection criterion so it's going to be reject H0 if the test statistic the absolute value of the test statistic is greater than Z alpha over 2 which is Z 0, 0,01 and if you look this up in the tables you will get a value of 2,326 okay and then to also note that this can this value can also be looked up in the t table so it's going to be t with degrees of freedom is infinity at 0, 0,01 and that will give you the same value of that the third step is to calculate the test statistic and again we're going to group this into four parts so the first part let's label it a is to look at those observations um, from the populate from the samples and then order them um, both from population and population one and two so over here we're going to look at ordering these values over here no matter whether they come from population or population 1 or population 2. So the, the lowest over there is 5.1. So we have 5.1 and that comes from population 1. The second value that we have is 6.7 and that comes from population 2. So we'll note that as 6.7 population 2. The third one will be, if you just scan over there, will be 6.9 which comes from population 1. So we have 6.9 coming from population 1. And then you can do it for all the others and it would look as, as follows. So once we've ordered the data, we want to look now which is now the second part, we want to look at each of the values in population 1 and count how many were greater than in population 2. So the first one would be at that 5.1 because it comes from population 1. Count how many were greater that were from population 2. So there we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So U over here would be 14 for the first one. Remember, we're only counting from population 2, not population 1. Then we take the second value in population 1, which is 6.9. Now we're going to count how many were from population, how many were greater than 6.9 that came from population 2. So there we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have 13 of those values that are greater than 6.9 that come from population 2. Then the third value is from uh, population 1 is 7.1. And again, it's going to be 13 because there was no, no, no population 2 in between. So we're going to have 13 over there. And you can count it yourself to confirm. 
the third the fourth one from 8.2 is again going to be 13 and then the next one will be 10.8 so 10 counting 10 point ones that are greater than 10.8 was just one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so we have 10 over there. and if you continue this process you'll get the following and if you sum this up you will get 117 so then now that's my value of u and let's call that the second step then the third well we still want to calculate the value of n1 and n1 was 12 and n2 was 14 Okay, so that how many observations came from population 2 was 14 and observations from population 1 was 12. Then the third step is to calculate the distribution of u. So we know u is normally distribution distributed with n1, n2 over 2 and the variance is n1, n2, n1 plus n2 plus 1 divided by 12. And we know that is when you will get these formulas will be 12 times 14 divided by 2 12 times 14 times 12 plus 14 plus 1 and you're very lucky you don't have to derive these formulas and it's just there for you and this will give me a mean of 84 and a variance of 378. So this corresponds to the mu and that corresponds to the sigma squared. Then the fourth step, D, is to calculate the test statistic. So Z is now equal to that U that we calculated minus mu divided by sigma. And we found that this u is equal to 117 minus mu, which was 84, divided by sigma, which was the square root of 378. And this will give me a value of 1,70. Okay, and that's my test statistic. Then the then, and that covers all four parts of the test statistic. Now the fourth, fourth part is the decision. So the decision is lying with the absolute value of 1.70, which is just 1.70, and my critical value is 2,326, and that is greater. Therefore, we fail to reject H0. And when we fail to reject H0, we are saying that the leaves, the leaves have an equal median from population one and two. So leaves have an equal median from population have equal median from population one and two and you would have to write out the whole thing that there's insufficient evidence to reject H naught therefore the leaves have an equal median at the two percent significance level and that is then the end of example. Now this is an exercise um, that you guys can do by yourselves um, which is quite a, a good exercise and I think it comes from a past paper and the exercise is just uh, stating that there's two storage methods A and B for apples that are compared by examining fruit for percentage weight loss for different apples so we have method A over there and method B and the question is carry out an appropriate non-parametric test to test the hypothesis hypothesis that one method is better than the other at the 2% level of significance. So here it's asking the appropriate non-parametric. So automatically you should see that this is a man with the U test. Why? Because um, the method A and method B are independent. So they are not paired. And also you can see they don't have the same number of observations. So method A has one more observation than method B. So you're going to carry out the appropriate non-parametric test which is now the man with the U test at the 2% significance level and note that it's now a one-sided test because it's asking whether one method is better than the other and then that is um, all for this lecture A28 if you have any questions please email me um, yeah thank you